Hey there, internet friends. Welcome to another episode of That Nerdy Site Show, weekly podcast where the team members from That Nerdy Site get together to talk about our lives and all of the nerdy things we love about them. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and joining me this week, once again, we have Cameron Abbott. How you doing, Cameron? Hey, what's going on, Trevor? What is going on? Uh, today, we're going to be talking all about our most anticipated games of 2023. Uh, now that we've got our Game of the Year stuff all behind us, uh, it's a little late. Obviously, we're <laughs> doing this in February, but we can talk about the games that we are excited for uh, throughout the remainder of the year. So we're going to chat about that. Uh, and then I've got, uh, you know, a few little miscellaneous uh, questions I'm going to throw at Cameron uh, in the conversation uh, in that vein uh, here at the end. So uh, before we hop into that, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you like the show, uh, please remember to like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast everywhere you can. All that fun stuff. Uh, new things you can find from us. Cameron, uh, speaking of game of the year, Cameron got his game of the year right up up on the website, that nerdy site dot com. So you can go check that out. Uh, now it's got a light of fire under my ass to maybe do that tomorrow while he's at work and I'm here on my Monday off. So we'll see. Uh, my write-up has been finished for several weeks. Yeah, mine is like mostly done. I just never go back and finish it. And that's, I've got like movie write-ups. I've got game write-ups. I've got my like platinum trophies of 2020. The only one I actually got out was the like Lego set thing at the beginning of the year because I basically just did that all in one night and was like, all right, I'm going to throw this out there and have it go. You've been very Lego motivated lately, though, that's, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, that's that's uh, that is certainly where a lot of my attention and resources went last year. Uh, but yes. Uh, so go check out Cameron's write up. Uh, in addition, uh, as he tends to do, uh, you can go find all the little Cameron uh, Easter egg photoshops in the game art that he has put together. Uh, some of them will give you nightmares. Um yeah. Uh, oh, Trevor, which was your favorite? Uh, I mean... Let me rephrase that question. Which one of them were you least annoyed by and which one of them were you the most annoyed by? I don't... I mean, I guess I was probably least annoyed by, like, Iodin Chronicles or something like that. Probably most annoyed with God of War Ragnarok because of the me-ness in that one. Uh, so, yeah, go find go find that out. And be as confused as I was because I'm like, wait, is that supposed to be me? All right. It is. Uh, anyway. It is. Uh, so yes, uh, today we're talking all about our most anticipated games of 2023. As we often do when we kind of look through this list, we're using the Game Informer like 2023 release schedule article as our kind of like baseline for this. So that's going to have everything kind of chronologically that has release dates as of this recording. And then it has like a whole slew of like TBA stuff. Um, so we're going to kind of run through that probably chronologically. Um, I kind of pulled together the games I'm interested in chatting about. Uh, uh, Cameron dis uh, has, has his list too. We haven't really shared too much uh, across there. So oh yeah, we're just going to hop in and, see where the story takes us um before we get to like the current timeline of things though i do want to jump in and give some love to a couple of the like january releases obviously if we'd done this like end of 2022 or the beginning of this year may have made the cut here um so uh first one i will give a shout out to is uh persona 4 golden and persona 3 portable obviously i've been playing persona 3 portable as we talked about last week uh, on the podcast. Um, it's just great that more people are getting a chance to play those games on modern consoles and stuff like that. So, uh, and, and I will say, as I said, I think last week, the going back to persona three portable for the first time for me, um, is mostly making me really want to like revisit persona four golden. Uh, so we'll see if I end up doing that as well. Um, uh, but that was one of mine from January. Uh, also fire Emblem engage is, on my radar of a game I want to check out this year. Um, we've talked, Cameron and I have talked, uh, Three Houses was my game of the year back in 2019, back when we launched that nerdy site. Um, so I, like, I've like i enjoyed recent Fire Emblem installments. The buzz on this one seems to be like, hey, if you like that stuff, they kind of took it out of the game on this one. It's much more focused on like the the strategic combat, which I enjoy, but... It, it is like, a, oh, that feels like it's only half a game then or half a Fire Emblem game. Um, how about you, Cam? Is that one on your radar anywhere? It is 100%. Um, I'm, I have really loved the direction that Fire Emblem games have been going. Um, I'm an old school Fire Emblem fan. Uh, ever since the first one came out to the GBA Western, um, I got excited because, of course, Marth and Roy are these sword-wielding characters from a Japanese game, like game 
franchise that we've never seen out in the West. I played it. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, where's Roy or Marth going to be showing up? And it's not. It's uh, it's uh, Leah's story or Lee's story. I don't know if it's pronounced Leia or Lee, but basically it's still a great game. Fantastic. Um, and just like I fell in love with the series and a fr the franchise as a whole. Uh, then I beat um, Shadow uh, Shadow Dragon, I think is what it is. The uh, the first Fire Emblem game. I played the port of the NES game okay. and figured out how to play it in Japanese. Um, All right. Didn't understand anything that was happening there, but I because of the context stuff I was able to pick up, I was able to beat the game and it was uh, pretty awesome. Um, that, that reminds me back way back in the day, early, early like internet day when I picked up uh, gold and silver ROMs for Pokemon uh, in Japanese so I could play them before they came out here uh uh you know american side uh and you know i i did ultimately buy the game so i feel less illegal about that but <laughs> it was definitely like a, i don't know what i'm doing but i know where fight is and i know where <laughs> and so it's just a matter of like all right i learned the moves and then i would i would take notes where i would like be like oh that's what that move is okay i'm gonna write the 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 text there and just have like a translation of that is you know ember or something like that <laughs> Um, so that I was learning Japanese at the time, never didn't really carry forward years later when I tried doing, um, uh, Rosetta stone for a little while, but <laughs> yeah, fun stuff there. You know, I had a little, like I had a little notebook that had all like the details of like, like not knowing what the kanji symbols were, like the, the katakana or whatever it was, um, just jotting down like, okay, position one, this is what it kind of looks like. And just kind of going from there, and I beat the game, and um, didn't understand the story at all, but I was like, I beat the game with Martha in it, that's cool. Um, fast forward years later, uh, I did not play any of the GameCube ver uh, versions that came out um, that had Ike in them. Um, I understand people have, were really into those, but I didn't own a GameCube, so that just wasn't in the cards for me. Um, fast forward years later, uh, there really wasn't a lot uh, going on Fire Emblem-wise on the uh, DS, unfortunately. Um it wasn't until the 3DS when they kind of like revamped the franchise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fire Emblem Awakening, I think, was my first Fire Emblem. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, I've never played Fire Emblem. I've never played the 3DS ones. Yeah, all right. Um, that is uh, kind of like a thing I'd love to go back to if Nintendo ever brought them to the Switch. I mean, I, I have them over here, and, and, and so you could play them on a 3DS if you want. <laughs> that I might take you up on that, actually. Right. Um, I just didn't own a 3DS. Yeah. Um, I have I have one of the Fates games too, Fireman Birthright. I think I didn't bother buying all the other ones because like that's kind of bullshit that like they went the Pokemon route with it, but it's like just the ending is changed. Beginning and middle part of those games are all the same, uh, and yeah, it's like that's annoying. Well, it's and, and also the, like yeah. there was a third game that you could only get if you bought like the collector set. Or, it was like screw this noise, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so you're excited to, to eventually happen to uh, yeah, engage. I mean, maybe. So like Fire Emblem Three Houses, I think, really changed the franchise in a very, very big way. Mm -hmm. um, they gave you a breadth of characters that had tremendous backstories and care, like just not even backstories that were too detailed, but just interesting um, characters were involved in their world in a very unique way. That was not just uh, we are part of an army or we're part of this force. It's a it was more of a there is a like each of these three distinct like groups have their own unique pol like political situations in them. And so you encounter a lot of like layers and series of prejudices and uh, of complications with character relationships and revelations based that you learn throughout the story uh, that make a lot of those characters really tragic. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I don't think that there is a bad character, so to speak in the fire emblem three houses like franchise i think that they're all oh you i mean you thought very differently when we discussed it back in 2019 pretty sure you hated edelgard i right? don't was it edelgard not uh it was my, my whole thing was like eight people were like edelgard's my waifu and it's like edelgard's a fascist exactly that's, um yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm saying this is the, don't get me wrong that was like, your opinion on that character yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's not like, a, oh i like that character that's her, a, that a fascist equals bad <laughs> Well, it's the thing about it is like none of like none of the like the best alliance that you can pick from from like a like political like politically speaking 
ends like the uh, spoilers for three houses ends the game being a uh, United Kingdom under a single like uh like singer a uh, single kingdom ruler anyway yeah um it you don't get to like democratize <laughs> uh they uh mm-hmm. not Thetis um yeah I don't remember the name yeah. either <laughs> uh like you don't get to do that <laughs> it's not like you know it, it's um it's very like but I love that. I love that that is a thing. I really want to go back and play from last year. Um, the Three Houses uh, Ten... Sh- is it a Ten Show? I'm trying to remember what the word is. Muso. That's the it. Muso game. The yeah. Muso game that came out for three it. Three Hopes. Uh, yeah, Three Hopes because it has a like a variation of the story with a new character and you get to see kind of like a different lens. And if it's anything like um, Hyrule Warriors, the like the way that things branch off in Hyrule Warriors, if that's also what happens in Three Hopes, I like, I can't wait to get through that and play that. That's really exciting. Yeah. Um, Budgetary wise, I was very constrained last year. Yeah. Uh, Also time wise, when I was working at my job before this one, where I was working way too many hours. Yeah. Yeah. Working, working a stupid amount of hours. The, the night, one of the nice things about us uh, living together now is we could buy one copy of Fire Emblem Engage and, you know, swap it out play it you, you can be playing that while i'm playing something else i can be playing that while you're playing elden ring for the new game plus plus or whatever yeah um yeah so and yeah, that's you know we save yeah. save money that way so so i, in, I even yeah. as i was out uh doing some running some errands today i was like oh you know what i should maybe can talk to cameron about doing a like switch family plan <laughs> um <laughs> for switch true. online stuff oh that's true we could totally do that yeah oh wow that makes so, sense um but so yeah so, so engage engage i i'm trepidations on based off of like what i've heard from it um about uh there's been such a hype like the premise that i found through it i thought was interesting but the lack of and i don't know like is it just there's just not as many social features is there like there's still more that i need to learn about this game before i before i decide to give it a shot because at this point time is our currency yeah and we don't have time to play every game. And so if this game, if I know that this game isn't going to do it for me, I'm just not going to pick it up. Yeah. On the plus side, the, like, as I think, I mean, we'll see kind of how our lists shake out and stuff. Like, this might be a good time to do it because there isn't a ton out there. Otherwise, it's maybe pulling us. Um, uh, last one in January I want to give a shout out to um, is Season A Letter for the Future. Or letter to the future. This is a game we first saw, and and uh, a lot of people on our team really liked back at PAX East 2020, back before the world fell apart. Um, uh, and funny enough, that's what the game's about. <laughs> exactly. Um, I finally got a chance to check out the demo that came out uh, a little while back, and it didn't wow me in the way that it did like the rest of the team. But I think part of that's also the nature of a lot of these demos is, hey, we're dropping you in the middle of the game just to kind of give you a feel for mechanics and stuff. So you don't have like the real setup or the ramp up to uh, to a lot of this stuff. In, in the same vein, I didn't have it on my list, but like Forspoken was the same kind of thing. Forspoken came out and didn't really like impress me. So it's, it's a maybe I'll check it out come like end of the year on a sale or something like that. But right now it's, it's not on my anticipated list uh, of, of checking stuff out. Uh, do you have any games up, uh, up through kind of like our present time yeah. that you want to shout out? Of course, Hi-Fi Rush. I think we talked pretty yeah. extensively about it last week, so I don't have to go too much uh, into it. That was one that like, you couldn't really be anticipated for though, since it did shadow drop. And it's yeah, shadow drop. But I mean, if you haven't yeah. played it yet, this is a game that is a game you have to check out. Um, yeah. It is, especially if you have game pass. Yeah, uh, that is a it is a perfect even if you don't have Game Pass, it's totally worth its price. Um, it's just a phenomenal game and people should check it out. Um, the only thing I can say is it's a game that could have used more ska. There you go. Um, also, in that vein, I'll give a shout out to Hitman World of Assassination. Now that they have basically like consolidated all of the Hitman games into a single thing, a single package. I back when Hitman 3 came out, I bought or I had Hitman 1, I bought Hitman 2, so I had them all in that, like, package anyway. Um, but I think that's a really cool thing now that anybody who didn't, who hadn't yet done that or anything like that, now if you have Hitman 3, you they, they've, they like, updated the game, basically, so you have the Hitman World of Assassination you can kind of play that whole thing. So shout out to just that team knocking it out of the park. Um, can't wait for whatever their Bond game ends up being next. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. I will say, like, um, if you haven't played the Hitman games, they're not just incredible, like, just gameplay-wise. Like, they're they're tremendous just on a gameplay level. Mm-hmm. 
story-wise, it's actually like a pretty interesting story that it takes you through it, where it really brings a different life to an otherwise very, like, you look at Agent 47 and you kind of just be like, oh yeah, he's like generic white dude assassin guy. But as you get through and you realize that there's like a, like there is a stoic, a stoic resolve behind this character and his, and his goals and what he's looking to do. Um, the reveals in the, at the end of the first game. And then as you go through the second and third game, I think are just, just speak to actually like a very interesting character mm-hmm. that it isn't interesting because, Oh, this is like a deep character with a lot of like different emotional, like story carry through that you go through, but rather it is a character who is, a great example of what somebody who is singularly minded can do to accomplish their goals. Um, especially when their goals are, uh, like you go from being thinking this agent 47 is like this, um, this like just cold, you know, cold killer for hire. And he turns out to be actually not a lot more, but he's more than that. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a fascinating story to dig through. Yeah. I will say, I mean, like back, back a couple of years ago when, when I played through it, Obviously, the sandbox nature of the games and the gameplay is like the bread and butter there. But it was like, a, oh, that, like I was surprised by how interested I became in the story over the course of the run. Um, so, yeah, shout out to that. And it was also weird because I did play it in a weird order where I'd like played a couple levels of the first game. But then I really wanted to get to like the Dartmoor mission in Hitman 3. So I played like a couple of those missions. So I do like some kind of like late stuff that wasn't making any sense to me until I went back and like played through the story <laughs> kind of chronologically. Uh, but yeah, shout out to uh, to Hitman. Um, uh, uh, I can't imagine this is on either list, but we would be remiss to not say it. So uh, regarding Hogwarts Legacy, fuck turfs. And that's all I think we need to say and we can move on. Yep. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think the discourse uh, I well. So if anybody saw my tweet about it, um, I came out pretty harsh. I well, I came out pretty definitively in a way that I think to might feel a bit cut and dry or a bit harsh for some folks. Um, when I said that, like I would judge you if you bought this game, I don't mean that in a sense of like I'm going to think that you're a turf ally. Um, and I want to reiterate by saying, if you buy this game, you bought this game. However you decide to buy it, however you decide to engage with it, whatever you've decided to do with it, there is a lot of baggage to this game. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I'm not going to, and I think part of my reasoning why I want to say this is because of like what's been happening to some streamers uh, where they have just been like, been very seriously harassed. I don't think it's gotten too, too, I don't think it's gone too, too far, but I think it's gotten pretty far in the treatment of people um, in regards to what's doing. Now, I think there's been some obfuscation as far as like the severity of it. But that being said, I do want to point out that um, if you decide to buy this game, you, you also decided to buy the baggage that comes with it, I think. And I am not going to say you're a bad person because I don't think that's, I don't think a purchase, a singular purchase is enough to define who you are as a person. But I hope that for, especially a massive shout out to people out there who, uh, have, or as part of being like, and this is a part of it too, is I read a, a very interesting breakdown from somebody on Twitter where they talked about what it means to not stream this game right now. Um, If you're a professional streamer, if you're a variety streamer, what it means to not be streaming this game. Mm -hmm. And what it means is that you are taking a massive hit and you're pot and like you're not it's not just losing money, but you are really hurting your like the projected future of what you can bring to the table for things like sponsors and other things like that. So here reading that breakdown, I'm like, okay, I get the business end of it. But I also saw those same people say that's why we're doing our thing where we're going to match dollar for dollar all our donations, all the tips and everything are going to go to things like the Trevor Project and whatnot mm-hmm. as a way of like offsetting it. And I still think that at the end of the day, I don't believe that there's such thing as a uh, like a moral calculator that doing A plus B equals you're a good person. Because at the end of the day, you yourself are your own personal moral arbiter. You are at the end of the day, you're the only person that has to live with yourself. And, and I don't mean that as seriously as that sounds. I, what I mean by that is if you feel like you're going to have a guilty conscience in playing this game, I don't think you should do. But if you think that you, if you can come to terms with it, however, you're going to come to terms with it, I'm not going to put you on blast and hate you for it either. Um, so to clear up any confusion on that, I don't think that you're a terrible person if you play this game, but I do hope that you take deeply into consideration what buying and playing and engaging with this game means 
um, and the the greater effects that it can be seen as. And I think that we've talked enough about kind of like the whole, the actual baggage about this game, but I just wanted to clear that up audibly because I haven't really found a good way of putting it into any sort of tweet and I don't want to do a six tweet thread. So yeah, I'm just not I mean, going to. I mean, that's that's a problem with discourse is Twitter doesn't allow for, I mean, well, now if you want to buy Twitter blue or whatever, <sighs> you can do that. But yeah. yeah. And and so much for my like, all right, fuck twerfs, we'll move on. Uh, sorry since, about that. But since no, we didn't, uh, I'll sorry, go ahead and throw yeah. in a few extra cents on my on my behalf as well. Um, uh, kind of going off of a couple things. Obviously, one of the one of the things we you know alluded to earlier is I've gotten a lot more into Lego, and Harry Potter is a huge Lego set of things, and I'm I'm definitely making a more concerted choice to like. I grew up loving lo- loving Harry Potter, and it sucks everything that has happened to that. I don't, I kind of fall in the camp of like, I remember when they did like Misfits and Magic, Erica Ishii did this great kind of like, she has this great like speech about how like she loved that story. And, and like, and despite what JK has become since, like it's, it's unfair to take away like the, the memories and the, the innocence and love of that story um, outright. Um, And uh, so like, the the thing I've kind of struggled with now is, yeah, if for this game in particular, okay, if I'm going to buy it, if I'm going to support it, I'm going to basically wait until there's a used copy I can pick up at GameStop. So no new money is going to WB or uh, or or JK Rowling or whatever. It's just going to another shitty company in GameStop. Um, but in the in the same like in the Lego vein of things, like if I am out there buying Lego sets or if we, you know, ever turn into like, oh, we're going to do like a Lego building, you know, YouTube show or stream or something like that. If I'm ever doing Harry Potter specific sets, just because, you know, a, as you kind of alluded to, it'll get eyes. Um, it like anything I would do would basically be like, all right, today I'm building in support of trans lives matter or something like that. And any, any money that may come in or, or just kind of even encouraging donating to that, while we shoot the shit, talk and and build some Lego stuff. So that's kind of where where I fall, which is a little bit of that like moral calculus or whatever that I'm 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 playing to kind of like justify why I might still con- consider supporting, especially because there's it's all like this is where we get into a whole bunch of like economic stuff. It's like, yeah, JK ultimately gets some kind of like percentile and whatnot, but nothing we're doing ultimately is making a dent in her net profit thus far and that's true so yeah. like she's already off the deep end and she's not gonna like look at the extra couple of you know zeros in her bank account or whatever and be like oh ha, everybody i mean well she already thinks everybody agrees with her and whatever um yeah. so like any you know somebody buying a copy of this game it's like yes it does send a message i saw a great thread kind of comparing it to like the chick-fil-a conversation a mm-hmm. number of years ago recently um but at the same point like there are also a ton of people out there that are completely oblivious to J.K. Rowling's politics. They just like the books or the movies and that story, and they want to play more in that universe or something like that. And they're not always online. They're not on Twitter. They're not listening to podcasts, having these kinds of debates and stuff like that. So, you know, it sucks. Uh, I would love to see her just kind of like get her head out of her ass. But until then, fuck turfs. Yep, and fuck turfs. Now we'll move on. Um, I will say if J.K. Rowling dropped dead tomorrow, I'd be a happier person. Sure. Um, I think about that about many of people that <laughs> suck ass. Um, Shitty old people just need to die. That'd be nice. Um, Did you ever listen to the Stephen Lynch song "Grandfather Die"? Oh, probably. I listened yeah. to a ton of Stephen Lynch uh, yeah. when when he was uh like making the rounds in the Comedy Central era. Yeah, just the the grandfather die. It's like yeah. I just want to be like J.K. Rowling die. All right. Um, well, since this will probably get like banned or reported or something like that, moving on. Um, one game that I, I want to give a shout out that's coming out this week that I just saw. Um, I don't know if I'll spend some time playing it, but since I did just do a let's play of Age of Empires 2, I want to give a shout out to Pharaoh A New Age being remastered and redone um, by uh, publisher Dotemu, uh, which does like they did like the Scott Pilgrim remake and they did like the Ninja Turtles um, uh, Shredder's Revenge Is recently and stuff like that. Is that the Egyptian flavored? That was, yeah, oh, okay. Egyptian flavored Age of Empires stuff, yeah. 
Because there's uh, also like Age of Gods or whatever it is. That's yeah, like the, the, yeah. There was there yeah. was Age of Gods. There was like a Zeus game. I, I have a lot of them over here in my my little uh, PC CD ROM collection and stuff. But yeah, I saw that on this list. I was like, is that is that like a remake of the old Pharaoh game? It was indeed. So yeah, shout out to that coming out this week. Um, <laughs> again, probably won't actually uh, boot it up on Steam or anything like that. But it was cool to see it out there. Oh, I will say a shout out before we move on. Shout out to Forspoken. I do plan on some point coming okay. back to that. Um, but it is just like, that's a big ask for like dropping 70 bones on that game. Mm -hmm. Like that's a big ask for me right now when yeah. I can not spend $70 and play <laughs> and, and play, play more Elden Ring. Exactly. Um, that is the great challenge of games this year. It's like, are you worth my time pulling me away from Elden Ring? Yeah. Um, the next one up that I want to give some love to is like a dragon Ishin. Oh, that's on my list as well. All right. Yeah. It comes out February 21st. Um, uh, this one, uh, like, obviously I'm much newer to the Yakuza series, uh, than you are. Um, but I did, you know, enjoy Kiwami one and two and Yakuza zero a couple years ago. Uh, oh, God, that was last year, wasn't it? Um, and, uh, uh, and like a dragon was one of my favorite games. Uh, no, I guess that was probably two years it ago. It was two now. years ago. Yeah, yeah. It was 2021. Um, uh, and so this like idea of taking the Yakuza cast and then throwing them into a new setting and a new story, but still having it be like Kiryu and Majima and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm very intrigued. It's going to have, I'm sure, the like absolute absurdity of the like a dragon slash Yakuza wait. stuff. Can't wait. Yeah. Going to be a fun one. Anything to add on that? Yeah. Shout out to all the himbos in the Yakuza series. I see you. Everybody I does. You. <laughs> I can't wait to play. More. I can't wait to like this game. This is a game that's on my radar. I, of course, have not played like a dragon just yet. Um, it is because I know how long it is. Mm -hmm, yeah, I mean, um, that's I, that's one if I've got the CD. If you want to, I, I own the physical and... copy as well. It's packed in a box in the <laughs> other room. All right. Um, oh, speaking of which, I got my bookcase in and like I, I was going to take time to do that today, but I was preoccupied taking care of like. Super Bowl. So, well, the Super Bowl, but also like before that, like you came in when I was on the phone with um, insurance reporting that. And so like also had, like trying to track down like the package that had all my medication, <laughs> like all, all sorts of stuff was happening today. Sure. Um, well, there's still time after the podcast. <laughs> not really. I have to like I have to shower and get go to bed and get ready for work. OK, well, then there was plenty of time had you not stayed up until four in the morning last night. 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, uh, how about Octopath Traveler 2? Is that on your list? That is anywhere? also on my list, yes. Yeah, it's it's on mine. I don't know if I'll check it out. And we've talked in the past. Like the first Octopath Traveler, I like I played through a chunk of that game, but I didn't really like that it was just like eight disparate stories. Um I, I would have liked to have seen more like crossover or like those are my favorite kind of like the Final Fantasy stories where it is like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna give you like snippets of each of these character stories, but they are going to like intermingle and they're going to you know feed into one another whereas this was like just very disparate and i was like eh, I don't really didn't really do a lot for me so i haven't really been paying any attention to this one uh, if i do decide to check it out i would probably hop in and play the prologue demo that's available now on switch um first but also i do appreciate that it's coming to other platforms right out the gate on this one so if i want to go get trophies i can go get trophies yep i will say that for me um, I think a game that did this really fantastically actually about like having a lot of like characters with like further backstories that are kind of also like disjointed from every the, from each other's is like the first and second Wild Arms games. Hmm. Um, Wild Arms 1 and 2 did kind of that thing where it's like, yeah, you got to play through like everybody's kind of like backstory thing. Um, and then it, but it all led up to the singular point where um, the story all kind of came together. Yeah, and ultimately, I think, Live Alive did that last year for me too. Yeah, um, but it was like even that. Like, I don't know if I would have stuck with Live Alive if I didn't know that was coming. Mm -hmm. um, but also, Live Alive, like the stories were of such different various genres, and the gameplay was different for each of those stories that I was like intrigued enough. Versus like the first Octopath Traveler is like, all right, these are all just like JRPG stories yeah. and JRPG. Like, it's all the same combat, same gameplay stuff. So it didn't. It didn't. If if and I ultimately don't know because I didn't ever get that far, but like if ultimately Octopath Traveler does get to that point where okay, now that you've played through all of these eight in uh, uh, singular stories, now we're going to have the whole party to come together and tell like the end game story. Cool. I didn't have the patience to get that far. I think that's fair. Um, I think when it comes to Octopath Traveler, 
Uh, it reminded me a lot of kind of like how D&D games are started a lot of times mm-hmm. is that a lot of times you are like, yeah, hey, you guys meet in an inn. Yeah. And you guys are doing this and like you're you all happen to have a job, but you all come from different places and you all have like backstories and stuff. That's super common in like tabletop games. And I think that Octopath adapted that fairly well, but it did never did the thing about narrate, like bringing things into a singular narrative. Yeah. Or at least a mainline narrative that kind of carried everything forward. Yeah. So. Um, uh, we also, uh, in, in talking about Octopath Traveler, that means we've skipped over all of the PSVR 2 stuff. Obviously, we're not really getting a PSVR, PSVR 2, not interested in spending that buttload of money for the one or two things that I'd be interested in checking out. So that's a bummer, but, um, Also, with what room do we get? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we could, we could make the room if we've fl- sure. finally finished, like, sure. unpacking and, and getting stuff ready and whatnot, but, um... Uh, how about Destiny 2 Lightfall? Are you going to hop into that? No. Revisit Destiny? No. No. Nope. I've hung my guns up. I am no longer a Destiny player. Air high five. Air high five. There you go. <laughs> um, like, I had a great time with it, but the, like, super repetitive weekly content drive for, like, the it- itsy bits of morsels of lore, um... Between that and just, like, the focus that they did on rebalancing the idea of, like, guns and stuff and mods and all sorts of stuff that it's, like, you want to have this, this, and this. Oh, you have this gun? No, you don't have that gun. Oh, like, it was very, very tedious. Mm -hmm. And it made it not as fun. Um, And also, I want to give a massive, like, shout-out, but in a bad way, or I guess it's a call-out at that point, a call-out to the fact that, like, Oh, cool. A new season dropped. Okay, I'm going to drop into that. Well, oh, all my friends, oh, we're all going to go do that raid together. Okay, well, my friends have like a hundred more light than I do. Like, I'm still at the light cat, like I'm still at the light level to like do this raid, but everybody else is so much far, like further ahead because they didn't ever stop playing. I mm-hmm. wanted to play another game. Yeah. And the punishment for going to play another game and not playing Destiny every day. Yeah. Um, it was too much to handle. And at that point I went in witch queen when they're like, yeah, it's witch queen. Da, da, da. And then they introduced like some, like really just like not skeezy, but just like really just like kind of like the way they wanted to roll out content and like charge for all the different kinds of like the way that they price structured it out. I was just super not into, mm-hmm. um, like I like time is my main resource at this point. Yeah. That's my limitation. And you can't, like, I don't have the time to play that much Destiny. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's ultimately where I, I came down on it, too. Uh, like, I remember trying to hop back into Destiny to check it out back when, like, Stadia came out. And, like, all right, let me see. You know, and it's it's a, I didn't recognize the game. I don't understand the mechanics. I don't understand the new stuff. I did just for the hell of it, uh, PlayStation Plus this month has Beyond Light, so I went ahead and at least like claim that. I'm kind of tempted to jump into the game and be like, "All right, how lost am I going to be?" and just do that as a let's play or something like that. Who knows? Um, because that's that's where I'm at on the game is like none of. I mean, the fact that like the original Destiny Two campaign isn't even in the game anymore <laughs> is like how how is that a thing that can just happen that's weird um, yeah, the, so yeah their their methodology for vaulting is like i get it on a like a on a one level i do get it on another level i think that it's kind of bullshit i mean like the comparison though would be like okay you hop into final fantasy 14 and you can't play a realm reborn stuff <laughs> like it's just not in the game anymore yeah that would be wild uh so yeah it's it's weird but Shout out to the people that do love Destiny. Yeah, shout out look, to like you know we uh, we got friends that work there and stuff like that now. So shout out to to that game and the people that are are sticking with it. It's just not our cup of tea anymore. Yep, I, I still think that, and also like the lore has gotten to a point where like I'm so far behind on it, I have no idea because I missed an entire expansion. Yeah, and I honestly like the lore was kind of going in a direction where how do I put it. Destiny did a really Destiny 2 at launch did a really great job of putting a focus on you as the guardian as this character who had a unique place in the story and I feel like that carried all the way through until Lightfall. Okay. Um or sorry, Beyond Light. All the way to Beyond Light. Uh after that it felt like it just felt like way too much emphasis was put on um 
other characters where basically you were running errands for them. Mm. And yeah. it's like, yep, yeah, you're just running errands for this actual this character who's actually important. Um, did you catch this lore bit that is being mentioned here? And it's like, you're no longer, you're just an errand boy. And it felt very like, anyway, it, it's fine. Yeah. It, it's, um, I will say shout out to the, uh, the vault of, or the vault of glass, not vault of glass, the, um, stone crypt. Okay. Um, the stone crypt was awesome. It was a great raid and it was a great way to kind of like say goodbye to destiny is in this like really badass awesome uh raid where like fucking the satellite you're on drops through atmosphere and crash lands and like that entire like all of that is just really really fucking cool all right um, so. well we're 30 plus minutes into the podcast and we don't need to spend that much Sorry. time talking about games we're not interested in so <laughs> like good yeah, call we'll, good call good we'll call. go ahead and and uh and call that one there um so the next one i have here in like mid to late march um i, I imagine you probably actually have something a little bit sooner but i'm going to give a shout out to storyteller uh this is a switch game uh, it's also coming to pc March 23rd. Uh, it's an Annapurna interactive game. Uh, so I remember first seeing it in like their Annapurna uh, like presents little direct thing a couple years ago. Uh, and this is a cool little one where basically like you're you're given like prompts and it's almost like you're creating like the Mad Libs using different story elements and stuff like that, but all in like a storybook kind of thing. So uh, I just remember seeing like the, the original kind of like trailer for it and being like, that looks really cool and really like interesting so maybe i'll check that out when it comes out here uh and you know i'll be looking for something to play around my birthday so that'll be potentially a next shot uh do you have anything here in march that you want to give some love to yeah um uh right off the bat uh beginning of march uh woe long fallen dynasty comes out um that comes out march 3rd mm -hmm. um i'm excited for that it looks really cool um i think that like if you want to talk about like very important periods of time um the han dynasty uh, which this game takes place during is a like critically important for just like human civilization as a whole. Um, but especially in Asia, uh, it's, I'm very fascinated to see what they'll do with it. It's a souls like game. So you'll probably not, won't be your cup of tea. Nope. Um, it's coming from a difference. It's coming from, I believe from a Chinese studio as well. Let me double check on that. Um, oh, never mind. Scratch no, it's that. It's team yeah. Ninja. Yeah. Team Ninja. So it, I guess in the way this, I would say this is much more of a, like a Neo successor. Yeah. Um, probably doing what Neo did with the Sengoku period with uh, the Han Dynasty, which, if it all connects in, would also still be very cool. Um, but overall, I'm a big fan. I thought Neo 1 was really cool. I never played Neo 2, but I'm also just excited to see what this new game has to offer. Cool, cool. Uh, anything else there in March? Um, let me see here. Uh, let me take a look. So WWE 2K23. Yeah, that's what I was, what I was going to check in with you on to see, see if you're going to hop into that. I might. Uh, we'll see. Um, I had a blast with WWE 2K22. Obviously, it wasn't my top 10, um, but that's not its fault. The fact of the matter is that despite spending a lot of time in that game, probably 60 plus hours. Um, there were just better games. Yeah, there, there's better games. And like um, my curiosity is I really found myself really enjoying the story mode in 22. I'm hoping that we get that again in 23, maybe a little bit different, maybe better. Um, I just found that the the overall kind of career mode, bringing that back was very fun. Mm -hmm. And I hope they do more for GM mode in this next one. Because um, GM mode actually was inter like interesting and entertaining, but I digress. Cool. Um, where do you fall on Resident Evil stuff? Are you going to hop into the Resident Evil 4 remake? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. Without a doubt. Um, I am not, uh, or have no, no intention to, uh, maybe I'll get like roped into it. Who knows? Um, uh, but I will give a shout out here, uh, cause right around there, we also have the last of us part one coming to PC. Obviously we've been very much gushing over the last of us, the show. Um, and at some point this year, I just, I'm gonna, I, I know I'm going to buckle and either like, hopefully it will come to PlayStation plus at some point and I'll just be able to play, Last of Us Part 1 for free, um, but if not, I will probably, by year end, have, like, buckled and picked it up on a sale or something like that. Who knows? Um, uh, yeah. Um, so moving on to April, unless you got anything else there in March. I don't believe so. Let me double check here. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, cool. Um, 
uh, just going to give a quick shout out to Tron Identity. Um, I don't know a ton about this game, but it's a Mike Bithel game, and I like supporting Ooh. Mike Bithel. So uh, and the fact that like he's been wanting to make a Tron game for quite a while and finally made the made the right connections with at Disney to make that work. Uh, shout out to that. That's coming out April 11th uh, to Switch. And then I believe at some undetermined point, I believe it's a TBD for PC um, in the future. But uh, shout out to that. Um, but the big one that I'm and probably like the first one I'm like really excited for uh, this year is going to be the Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC uh, April 19th. Um, uh, getting to take uh, uh, Aloy up to Hollywood and just continuing on that saga. Um, that's just going to be fun as a nice opportunity to like revisit that game, which was, I think, my number two game of, of last year. So uh, very much looking forward to, for a reason to revisit it. Um, that on your list as well? It is, yes, 100%. Um, yeah. I'm very excited for it. It was my number six game of the year. Um, still, like, if, if you made it into my, like, I think if you made it into either of our top tens last year, you were a great fucking game. So mm -hmm. um, Horizon Forbidden West, Burning Shores, definitely on my list. I can't wait. Yep. Um, yeah, like, I can't wait to see LA. Uh, going to San Francisco in Forbidden West was fun as hell. Mm -hmm. um, and also, and also like, I mean, the Mojave, you can't, you can't go wrong going to the Mojave. Yeah. So, um, cool. Uh, any, uh, any other stuff here in April? Uh, yeah, a couple of things for me. Um, okay. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. I probably won't pick it up, but shout out that, especially for front of the show, Scott White, Professor RPG. Um, it's that, that is one that has a very special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Um, I put a lot of time into those games. Um, another shout out is going to go to, and like, so another one on my list though, is going to be, um, Advance Wars one plus two reboot camp. That's on mine as well. Yeah. Um, as somebody who didn't play the originals, um, I'm, I like, and, and when they got announced, you know, quite a while ago now, <laughs> I was like, Oh, cool. I've heard great things about these games. I love strategy, you know, tactical strategy games. I can't wait to check that out. And then a war in Ukraine happened and pushed the, the game out, uh, indefinitely, but now it's finally coming out um so looking forward to finally getting a chance to hop in and check those out yeah it's story um the, the, there's a they're like pull it's not just like oh war broke out we don't want to put out a war game it they're like the situation that kicks off the story in advance wars one is very similar mm. and so it's not like the best um smart of them to like delay it probably so they like it just to avoids any kind of like controversy Fair enough. um this is just a very like for a fun cartoony game that's about like the horrors of war. Um, no, well, it's not really the horrors of war. It's, it, it is a Nintendo ass, uh, wartime tactics game. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun. I am very excited, uh, just to get, to get back into this franchise. I think it's great. I'm really hoping that does well. So it leads to advanced wars. There you go. Uh, and then lastly, I imagine, uh, well, I don't know if you're going to do dead Island too. Uh, but the last one on my list here is star Wars Jedi survivor. Uh, the recently delayed, but coming out April 28th. Um, that is on my list as well. This is probably my time to say that I'm probably going to play uh, Jedi Fallen Order this year. Um, oh, at some did, point. did you never play Jedi Fallen Order? Never. Oh, no, you definitely need to check that one out. Yeah, no, I was. Um, I was so. <laughs> I don't so, think I have that physically. I think uh, it's OK. I have it digitally. It's OK. okay. Um, I got it for the PlayStation, like the PlayStation oh, yeah, Plus. PlayStation Plus, um, yeah. When, when I was like, oh, okay, okay, cool. And then somebody said, man, wouldn't it have been cool if and they like gave a bunch of different things. It's like, wow, now this feels boring and lame. I'm good. I mean, you, you said you wouldn't, or you're not going to like the character Cal Kessis, which, and you've like argued that a lot. And I'm like, you haven't played the game. You don't know what the fuck the character is. Oh yeah, no, no, no. no the, pro the problem like, is, is that think... somebody poisoned my mind about alternatives that I thought that like. Would have been way cooler. Sure. But I'll like I'm now I, here I'm at a point now where it's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just go and do it. Let's play the fallen order. Let's get through this. And like if it's if I click with it, if I dig it, great. If I don't, fine. But at least get through it. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, especially it is I mean, it is a Soulsborne inspired game. Um, and while I played it on like apprentice level or whatever, you as more of the uh, the Soulsborne uh, uh, aficionado. I will play it on normal. Can play it on normal or hard or no, just you know, Jedi Master or whatever you want to play it on. But um, yeah, I think I think you'll enjoy it. Um, especially, uh, there are definitely some like lore things in there I think you'll enjoy uh, with some of the characters and whatnot. So um, yeah. And also it's got BD1. BD1's freaking the best. Um, 
See, that's the thing. I'm not going to lie. That's probably what's going to sell it for me is like the idea of having a, another cool, like the way people have sold BD1 for mm -hmm. me is very much like one of the biggest reasons I want to play the game. now. I have two copies of that Lego set <laughs> that I need to eventually build one of them. I basically had one and then my folks gave me one for Christmas and I was like, I already have it, but cool. Thanks. So, um, yes, uh, shout out BD1. Um, moving on into May then, unless you have any last minute, uh, April shout outs. Nope. That's it. All right. Uh, so May is going to kick off with Redfall, uh, there on May 2nd. Yeah. That's, that's high on my list of things to check out this year. 100%. And, uh, and we can probably run that one co-op and Let's stuff. So that'll be fun. Let's fucking do it. I'm uh, so excited. I Redfall from the moment it got announced immediately, like kick started, like my, like just immediately injected excitement into my, like my love of like. New England, uh, like horror mythos. Um, the fact that it's like playing up uh, Stephen King's, uh, like you have the, what is, I'm trying to remember what it is, Salem's Lot. Uh, like the whole Salem's Lot vibe of that. A Lost Boy, like Lost Boy, Salem's Lot. The whole like vampire in New England shtick is just so cool. And then they debuted the characters that you actually get to play as. And they're all fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Like this is this is one that is just like so fucking high up on my list. I can't wait to get it. Yeah, it's like I, as a as a longtime fan of like the Dishonored games and stuff like that. I I love what Arcane does. Deathloop was great. Um, I never played Prey because I'm not a uh, I'm a big old baby, and that's one of my biggest like concerns about Redfall being more horror themed and stuff. But. Uh, and so I'm like, all right, well, but at least I can like hop in with other people. Not that I would normally do that, but since now I have a roommate and uh, and we can do that together um, uh, and we've been doing that, you know, in our in our Elden Ring stuff, uh, I'm much more getting like comfortable with the idea of hopping in and, and playing an arcane game multiplayer and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, shout out to that one. Um, uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is... Of course, it's yeah, it's it's even though I'm lukewarm on the first game, I will kind of put a tease out here that uh, one of our uh, Let's Play series that will be launching later this week actually is me revisiting Breath of the Wild. Um, so you can stay tuned for that in the lead up to uh, uh, Tears of the Kingdom here. Um, I mean, like it's definitely going to be one of the most talked about games of this year. So um, it would be foolish to not hop in and check it out. And at my heart, I, I love Legend of Zelda stuff, so I'm hoping that this one connects with me and, and grabs me more than uh, the first one did, or that, you know, whatever the, the, the my mindset is just in a better, more adept place, or maybe I can just be like, all right, screw it. I'll just get over the fact that weapon degradation is a terrible video game mechanic and just deal with it. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's on my list. Uh, and, uh, anything to add from you, Cam? Um, no, that's it for me on, uh, I believe May, that's May. Yeah. Um, cause I, mean, I don't well, think any, either of us give a shit about Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. I, I largely don't, but I'm hopeful that Rocksteady somehow managed to, manages to not suck at live service games. I don't expect it. And especially Gotham Knights has not led me, left me with any kind of like hope for the future of the Batman verse in the WB gaming space. Um, yeah, it's, I like, I want to like that game more, but from like leaks and stuff that have been coming out, I'm like, Oh, I don't think I'm going to, which sucks. Cause Samoa Joe is playing King shark and that's awesome. Yeah. I love fucking love Samoa Joe. Yeah. Um, but anything to add on, uh, tears of the kingdom, uh, tears of the kingdom. I'm super excited for it. Um, I can't wait. Uh, I have, like I have such I like I've been excited since they debuted that first trailer a couple of years ago. Um, I think I was a much bigger on um, Breath of the Wild than you were, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had a lot of the same frustrations you did um, in regards to like equipment. I'm really hoping that they can get that balanced right. I don't mind breakable equipment. Just don't make it break so easily. That, of course, is my biggest <coughs> complaint about like the Last of Us gameplay. But like the Last of Us gameplay is fantastic. It's like. My weapon can't break after like one or two hits and for me to be like, cool, dude. I mean, well, like only the shivs do that, <laughs> or I guess the melee stuff, but like the melee stuff also all, always has like, here's how many hits you have left. Yeah. The, oh, the yeah, Zelda the stuff is like, it's an unknown. I In the yeah. Let's Play, in the first Let's Play, it's coming out like I accidentally throw like one of the first things I get and it breaks immediately. <laughs> I'm like, what the? <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you're right about that. Um. 
Yeah, I just hope that it's better balanced this yeah. time around. Um, that's my biggest hope. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, well, moving on into uh, June. Um, where are you falling with Diablo 4? I'm fascinated with it. Um, I I fucking loved Diablo 3. Um, I got to it way, way, way late. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got to Diablo 3 super late. It was after the like collector's edition um, after like the last expansion and the necromancer pack released. Um, I fell deeply in love with the necromancer gameplay. I found that one. I l- fucking love Diablo. Lore. Diablo lore is of course so fucking good. It's so juicy. It's so great. So when they introduced that Lilith is the villain this time around, um, I got very excited about that um, because of the lore implications of it. Um, there's just so much about the entire Diablo, like where Diablo three left off where um, it's very clear that like certain things weren't, uh, weren't done about like seriously loose fucking threads in the story. Um, I'm really hoping that that gets addressed this time around. Uh, if they don't, that'll piss me the fuck off. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited for what this game has to offer. Uh, I, I am very hopeful for it. Um, granted this was part of my, uh, bribery at BlizzCon article that I wrote years ago Mm -hmm. where they announced Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, um, et cetera. Like, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, like my hope is that it's really great, but like at the same time I have concerns. Yeah. I, so yeah, I never, I never played the Rise of the Necromancer stuff. I played Reaper of Souls. I'm looking at my PSN profiles account. I probably played Blizzard or uh, Diablo three last in 2015. I Diablo three was a game I played with my sister back when she was living in Nashville for a while. And then Texas, um, uh, like the, the couple years she was out of state, like it was a game. Uh, I think I bought them like a, her and her, her husband, like a PS four and a couple of games like this and like borderlands stuff. So we could just like, get together and play. And we played a few times, not a ton. And it didn't like, it didn't become like as a recurring thing as maybe I'd originally hoped because lives got in the way. Um, but like that was the first time I'd ever played Diablo multiplayer stuff at all. Uh, and so it's one, like, I'm not going to give a shit about the lore. I'm going to enjoy the clicking and the going up and getting better gear and stuff like that. All that, all that just like endorphin rush stuff. Um, but it's another one that like, especially now that, that we're living together can be like a fun, Hey, like we can hop in on into games together and check that out. So, um, it, and I think it'll also ultimately probably be the first like Activision Blizzard thing I've played since Activision Blizzard really showed its ass for being as sucky as it is. Um, uh, cause it's the only first or it's the first slash only thing I'm potentially interested in from them since Overwatch doesn't really do anything for me and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, then a couple weeks later, I imagine this is on both of our lists, Final Fantasy 16. You know, um, yeah. talk about like the, mo- like I hate to break to everybody. That's, this is my most anticipated game of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, the Final Fantasy 16 team is absolutely stacked. Um, I think that the, um, if, you of course have gone through played through final fantasy 14 um i have to say that the like the team behind uh 16 is absolutely stacked of course you have yoshi p who's the producer but the designers being um let me make sure i put my glasses on so i can actually oh uh, let's see here so uh hiroshi minagawa Kazuya Takahashi and Kazutoyo uh, Mehiro uh, as the creative director and lead. Uh, so I'm sorry, artists are those two. Kazutoyo Mehiro as the creative director and lead writer. Um, he was, of course, the person and the creative director behind uh, the Shadowbringers campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, he is also and also Endwalker as well. I believe. Um, oh no, sorry, Endwalker. I believe the creative director for that was. The person who did the Dark Knight quest line for Heaven's Word. So my apologies, because he, because he, of course, was working on Final Fantasy 16 when Endwalker was in production. So that being said, um, he is fantastic. I think he totally is the perfect creative director to, uh, between him and Yoshi P, helm this new entry um, into being a classic fantasy Final Fantasy, but at the same time, take it into a 
more modern storytelling approach. I think if you go back and you play through any of the last few entries, um, you have a frustration where storytelling is dated, um, especially when you want to talk about things like 10 or 12. Um, I think 12 is probably the first time that they broke through for modern modern storytelling for the time period, but it also suffers from other like story structures, director hand out, like director directors being handed over. Um, 15, I think, was a... 15 is a, uh, a massive game, topic. A, a game of two worlds, uh, as we've discussed many a times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or a, 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 tale yeah of, a tale of two tale games. Of two games yeah. I, I, I can't... Yeah, I, I think I tried to write that article, like or that piece, like 10 times. Yeah. Um, it just never came together, ever. Yeah. Because, honestly, there's just so many unanswered questions about the development of that game. Um, and we'll never know. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to... Yeah, but when it comes to Final Fantasy XV, like that's a hard thing to try to approach on, like, like trying to make a prediction based off of XV. Um, so I will say, like, I'm just super excited for it. I think that it's from what we've seen, the gameplay trailer that came out not too long ago, the story trailer stuff that we've had for the last couple of years, those have all been super high quality, super interesting and intriguing, and I really can't wait to get into this. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's definitely up there on my most anticipated uh, for the year as well. So much so that uh, before we were like, while you were watching the Super Bowl, I was uh, at one point over on Square Enix's website, almost buying the collector's edition of this game. I didn't because I was like, that's I don't need to spend that much money on a thing that I'm going to get like the Phoenix versus Efrit statue or something like that. I don't need to do that. But there's time. There's time. Uh, still. So, there's so time. who knows? The thought, <laughs> um, the thought has crossed my mind. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, we are running low here on the actual games with dates. Um, uh, anything else in June there for you? I don't imagine so. Uh, let me double check here. Uh, Story of Seasons Wonderful Life. Want to give a quick shout out to that. The original okay. Harvest Moon game that that game is going to be based off of is absolutely rad as hell. Um, check it out. It's not up there for me as like Friends of Mineral Town or uh, like on that level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that uh, A Wonderful Life is an incredible, incredible setting for the game. I think um, I, ha- I think I actually have two copies of Harvest Moon. It's a Wonderful Life. I think I have a PS2 version and a GameCube version. Yep. So the GameCube version is the base version. The PS2 version is the special edition that has an additional uh, love interest um, who in the original edition was an only potential love interest for your son because her stuff wasn't introduced until much later in the game. All right. So but she's eight. But her stuff is then rolled forward. So she's an actual like of age companion for you. All right. The more you know. There you go. Um, uh, moving on. Uh, do you have anything here in July? In July, let me double check here. Um, no. Shout out to our friends who are the fans of Legend of Heroes games. I'm I'm happy you guys are getting a new one. Um, I will say I'm I'm excited for Disney Illusion Island. Um, yes, that is something for you. Yes, uh, it is absolutely something for me, and it is a multiplayer game, so it might be one that we can hop in and, and play through together. Sure. It's like up to four players. Um, it's it's very much like a throwback Disney plat Disney action platformer stuff, but in like the new art style that they've been doing with like um, like Mickey's Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway or whatever mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it, it, yeah, the new Disney animated uh, art style for the classic uh, Disney cartoon characters. Yes, yep. I'm I'm a fan of that actually. Yep. Uh, and then the last one with a date, I imagine, is on both of our lists. Sea of Stars, August 29th. Yes. Um, I, uh, a, a, as you are listening to this, uh, you can go ke- ch- uh, check out my Let's Play of the Sea of Stars demo, uh, which I basically put live the same time this episode is going to go live. Um, so you can go catch me uh, checking out that. That's a game I backed back when it was on Kickstarter a few years back. Um, I'm, I backed it at a level that I'm going to have like a statue thing in the game somewhere. They basically like. What? That's cool. Okay. Yeah, they basically That's were right. like, hey. Hey, uh, send us like five reference photos um, and and ideas for like what you want to do, uh, and uh, and we'll you know c- create a statue for you. Uh, and mine's gonna have it, it's basically going to be my like badass lightsaber pose, um, but with like pixel glasses if they can make that work, and like a couple other like elements from like pictures and stuff of of my past that I basically sent them as like, hey, can you do this? No idea. I don't, I don't know if they're going to send like a, a reference thing, anything beforehand of like, here's what it's going to look like. Does this look good to you? Or if I'm just going to find it in the game somewhere. But I really hope they go with um, Lucio hair era. Trevor, I, I gave I gave them specific. Uh, uh, yeah, I think actually I think I did maybe give them that 
that headshot of that that uh, Ben took of like oh my, my hair gosh, up. that'd be the best. Oh I my gosh, that'd be so cool with your lightsaber pose from your first one back yeah. then. Yes, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. So my my thoughts on that game are already going to be you know uh, uh biased a little bit uh to to a degree. But um, this is the team that did the messenger. Uh, and this is basically which was you know a great throwback to like eight and sixteen bit platformer stuff of NES and SNES era incredible writing some of my favorite writing in video game stuff um and i can already see from the demo of sea of stars that that's continuing on sabotage studio putting that one together uh, and it also exists in the same world as the messenger but like super super prequel kind of stuff so it'll be interesting to see if like you know they they set things up that you know are ultimately paid off in the messenger or something like that is the messenger the one that transfers from 8-bit to 16-bit yeah okay it's yeah it's it's the like you you travel through time kind of thing and yeah. and you're yeah you're you're now 16 bit ninja um so yeah shout out to sea of stars anything to add on that one it's uh, also it's 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 like chrono trigger-esque gameplay too is the is the big thing now yeah that's what i'm actually excited for i was not going like i saw a lot of gameplay from the messenger and that's just like not really my bag mm-hmm. um but yeah uh i'm excited for it i i'm very excited i need to play the demo actually yeah but, all right. Um, so now we're moving into the TBAs section. Uh, so these ones don't have a firm date, um, but uh, we'll just kind of go through alphabetically on these. Um, uh, right off the bat, I'll throw to you. I don't know if you're going to check this one out. AEW Fight Forever. I will be. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious if what the studio. So AEW Fight Forever is being made by the studio that used to make the 2K games. Um, I'm very curious about like what like that studio has been very public after the falling out they had with 2K. Um, when they basically were like, they were fired for like putting out, like, they're like, we don't have enough time to turn around on this game. And 2K said, well, fuck you. And they said, well, fuck you. And then they got fired um, by 2K. Uh, they've been very out there and vocal about like the issues that they had working for 2K. So I'm very curious to see, like, this will be the proof in the pudding for like, okay, is this actually going to be, are they actually going to make a good wrestling game? Um, apparent, from what I understand, it's going to be a bit more of like the old school kind of um, no mercy style uh, arcade like arcadey type games rather than the wrestling sim games that uh, 2k games were under them mm-hmm. so i'm excited to see where that goes from i think that AEW has a fantastic roster i'm really excited because a lot of the people kind of like helming the kind of like creative process with uh the studio is are people like kenny omega people who have had a long history of playing a shit ton of wrestling games mm-hmm. and have a deep passion for them as well so i'm excited to see where that comes from or yeah. what it comes out to, rather. Yeah, indeed. Um, any, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know how far. Like my first one doesn't get doesn't show up until the E's. So cool. I will let's throw go. To you let's go through any, mine. Anything else? All yeah. right. Next up, we have Armored Core Six: Fires of Rubicon. Unsurprising. Um, <laughs> I'm so fucking excited. I lost my mind when that when that reveal happened. Um, f- I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I love the Armored Core series. It's one of my favorite all time. Like. Robot giant robot series and franchises of it's one of the best ones of all time. It is a just a fantastic, fantastic game that I spent and sunk hours of gameplay into. Um, just, just it was the coolest, and I can't wait to get back into it. I can't wait to see what they do now, like what this team that has left that game that franchise so far behind on coming back to it and what they'll bring to it now. Um, I don't anticipate it being Soulsborne at all. Um, I think a lot of people are like, oh, it'll be like a Soulsborne mech. Game. No, that's not what this franchise is. Um, I'm very excited to see what lessons they learned from these other games that will pull this into going forward because I can't wait for that. Um, and then Assassin's Creed Mirage. That's one that like I will see if they can draw me in. I like the Valhalla was just too big of a fucking game. <laughs> and and I also uh it, it definitely have like held over PTSD from from the bugs that prevented me for a long, long time from getting the platinum on that one. Um but yeah, that just there's so much goddamn game in that one. Yeah, so I, and that's as as somebody who hundred percented it. Yeah. Yeah, I think Assassin's Creed Mirage, the way that they've kind of like built it as like this is a throwback to the older Assassin's Creed games as far yeah. as gameplay goes. That's what I'm most excited for. I have not been a fan of the new Assassin's Creed gameplay. Um, the RPGification uh, and like just shit ton of equipment to go through all of that. I've just never been a big, not the biggest fan of. Um, Weird, given how much you love your Dark Souls, but OK. That's not the same, though. 
Uh, but I, so yeah, a uh, massive, like, I'm very excited to get to it. Also, I'm very excited to go to Iran. I'm very excited mm -hmm. to like go to, or uh, yeah, to Iran. I'm excited to see like Persia and get into kind of like this part of the Assassin's Creed lore that we don't really have too much information on. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Yes. Baldur's forward? Gate 3. Okay. Um, I'm very excited for that. I've been kind of loosely paying attention. I have never pulled the trigger on buying the alpha. Um, but I'm just very excited to see what that game does because I love Dungeons and Dragons. I think the Baldur's game or the Baldur's Gate games have been great. Granted, um, this one is not being done by Bioware, but it's done by the uh, what the team Larian Studios, right? Yes. Yeah, they've got they've got their own little uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which which ones were theirs? Pillars of Eternity? No, not Pillars of Eternity. Uh, I'll do a quick Google search just to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, Divinity. Yeah, there we go. D Divinity Original Sin. Yeah, Divinity. The Divinity games are are pretty good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So like, I'm I'm excited to see where we get with this. I think that it's it should be pretty great. Um, from what I've heard from people and seen from the gameplay and stuff, is that it's really solid. People are just like, but it's not a finished game yet. I'm like, cool. I'm just waiting for it to be a finished game at this point. That's mm -hmm. it. I'm very excited for that. Uh, let me see if there's anything else on my list real quick here. Do uh, no, I'm down to ease now. Cool. Uh, so I had in Chronicle 100 Heroes, I imagine, on both our lists. Yep. Uh, um, full disclosure, I also am a Kickstarter backer on this one, and I did do the uh, thing not to get like a special cool collector's edition, but I will be getting a free copy of the game. So nice. My my opinion. Uh, that's also like so, why so, my my blurb about Aiden uh, yeah. Chronicles Rising was so small. It's like everything it's, I'm about to say is basically like is mostly like hopes that I have for the game that's coming out. Yeah. I mean, so I it, even that it's like, it's weird, like giving a disclosure for backing these games. Cause it yeah. is like, well, we just pre-ordered them basically. <laughs> like yeah. that's, that's really all we did. We just pre-ordered them before we were sure whether or not we were actually going to get a game. That's um, true. So. Um, I, I think that this studio especially is the, this is made up of all of these we in team like the the reveal trailer alone is like super freaking heartwarming if you mm -hmm. ever get the time to watch it because it's essentially just like a roll call of like these old ass game developers um and you see like it there's like like there's a lot of like both like men and women on this team and it's cool to see like just like this old school rpg team where like yeah we want to make a game where there's a hundred different characters with backstories and abilities and things that are cool about them and we want to build up this, like you want to do the base building thing. And like, it's like, but we couldn't do that at uh, Tecmo, I think it was. Or uh, no, they were Konami. Kona oh, fuck yeah. Even worse. Um, we couldn't do that at Konami. So we, and we were all broken apart in, in different, like different parts of, on different teams. And so we just quit and we're all coming together and we're really hoping that you support us. And man, I, I'm like 100%. I don't got a lot of money at the time because I was still in school. And I was like, I'll like I'll drop the money that it takes to get like a like the the free version of the game. Give it to me for Steam, so I don't have to worry about like they're like we'll worry about console updates and whatnot when we're getting closer to release and whatnot. And we'll like we'll let you update your version or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or, or even like refund you your money if like you if you aren't interested in playing games anymore. And it's just like they're just like the sweetest people in the world who are very passionate about this project, and I'm very excited. Yeah, I am. Uh, I didn't back it, but um, I, the the snippets I've played a week in two back when Jared Petty would like sing its praises from the rooftops uh, on like Beyond back in the day um, got me to pick it up on Vita as like a PSP classic when they or a classic when they finally released it there, um, and it definitely was like overwhelming, but also like I could find myself sinking my teeth into something like that uh, these days. Um, and uh, um, in particular, playing uh, the the kind of prequel precursor game last year um, uh, th that was on your list, which uh, what was that? What's the uh, name Chronicles Rising. Chronicles. Yeah, there you go. Um, like you sang its praises. It was on Game Pass. I checked it out, had a great time with it. Didn't make my top 10, but it was definitely like in an honorable mention kind of state. And if I ever get my top 20 out there, it's in that list. Um, so yeah, shout out to that. I'm, I'm very excited to check out and see what hundred heroes ends up becoming. Um, anything else on the E's? Or are we ready to move into F's? I think we're ready to move into F's. Yeah. So I got a trio here that I'll, I'll just go right into. I imagine part of this is on yours. Uh, Final Fantasy pixel remaster series. Uh, I have them all on steam. One of the reasons I was on the Square Enix site during the Super Bowl is cause Wario 64 tweeted out the link. Uh, but by the time I got there, they'd they'd sold out of the physical copies again so i was like god damn it um 
because I would just like to buy a physical version of that on PlayStation 4. I'll buy it ultimately digitally if I have to, but yeah. Um, fucking Square Enix and their terrible store. Uh, especially because like, I would really love the collector's edition of it and all the cool art stuff that comes with that, but that's probably going to be uh, impossible. Um, I'm also interested, I'm very interested in what the Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis is going to be. This is the mobile game that's basically like, a combination of all of the Final Fantasy VII stuff, but in like chibi and episodic form and stuff like that. Um, and there's probably going to be a whole bunch of like, not pay to win, but a whole bunch of like microtransaction stuff if you want to get like different costumes and stuff like that. Um, I'm very intrigued by what that one's going to look like. It's mobile only, iOS, Android. Um, but then the my actual most anticipated, you said Final Fantasy XVI earlier. Well, it's up there. If we actually get Rebirth, the follow-up to, re- to Final Fantasy VII Remake this year. Sure, yeah. I am, that was my game of the year, 2020. I am incredibly fascinated to see where they take the story moving forward and uh, and just, and just and the fact that we're getting it potentially as soon as we are. It's also slated for like winter of 2023. We'll see. I don't, I don't know if it'll actually hit that or if it'll get pushed to next year. But if it does come out this year, uh, I'm going to be super stoked and just basically drop everything at the end of the year and pl- and put as much time into that as I can. Uh, and, and it was cool getting to do that effectively with crisis core, uh, not too long ago as well. Um, anything to add on these final fantasy trios? Uh, I imagine rebirth is probably the one, the only one really on your radar. Uh, no, I'm, I'm interested in the others as well, but like, we'll see what ends up happening with those. Mm-hmm. Um, 2020 is, I think, the year that uh, was when they came out. That's what I said, yeah. Oh, I thought you said 2021. I was like, I don't think that was our 20, that was your 2021. No, I I said it was my number one in 2020. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, when it comes to that, I am... Also, the last last game officially reviewed on that nerdy site gave it a 10 out of 10. (laughs) Yep. Anything to add? No, I was just like, like, where did I put it on my list? I was like, I put it at four? What the fuck? And you liked you. I mean, like that was also the year of like Hades and a, and a couple. Yeah, of no, the problem was Ghost of Tsushima, which oh, yeah. like I was super. That was, into that was a Cameron ass game. Yeah, I absolutely. was super into that. Oh, that's what it was. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Run, like yep. fucked everything up that year. Yeah. And then Hades was my number one because like I just it's just it's my game. It was my game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm excited for Rebirth. Um. I like it. I'm super fucking excited for Rebirth. Ever Crisis. I'm curious. Um, we'll see what we get with that, but, uh, yeah, overall I'm like in the pixel remaster series. That's the one that I'm not doing too. Yeah. Um, it's not on this list, but I want to give a shout out, a special shout out to the second expansion for Forza Horizon five is definitely coming out sometime this year. Don't know what it's about yet. Don't know when it's coming out, but it, it's not going to not come out here in 2023. I had a lot of fun hopping back into that game last year with the Hot Wheels stuff. Uh, so I'm excited for whatever they end up uh, throwing our way here uh, for expansion two. Um, anything else in the Fs from you? I'm keeping an eye on Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn. Okay. Um, it's it's could be good. It could be fascinating. It could be interesting. We'll see. I don't think there's just been enough yet. I, it, there's a good shot also this that game might not come out this year. Okay. Because um, there's so little about it that's coming out. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so for me in the G's, uh, I've been excited for goodbye volcano high since the original, like PlayStation five launch. That like, is, that is series. the, the dinosaur. That's the dinosaur. Yeah. Dinosaur, like em- emo game, uh, animated emo game kind of thing. Um, I, I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know. It, it's supposed to finally come out this year. Um, but I, yeah, it's, it's very much on my. Uh, like anticipated for whatever it's going to end up being. Cause it, I just, I, a, a, I like the idea of like dinosaurs, you know, in high school <laughs> animated dreading the, you know, the apocalypse of, uh, of the meteors coming or whatever, but yeah. Um, also, yeah. Also it's like fucking like it, like it seems very interesting. I forgot about it, uh, mm-hmm. but it's fascinating, but also it's like, I looked at like some art of it. And I was like, Oh, that's right. I forgot. It's like massive furry shit. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, yeah. It's very much that furry shit. But hey, that's the thing. We are furry supporters here on that nerdy site. Absolutely. It's not what I think about when I think of that game, but sure. <laughs> oh, also, I think I've been corrected before in the past. If it's dinosaurs, I believe they'll be considered scalies. That, that would make sense. I, yeah. I they're like, not uh, furries. They're scalies. It's a subsection about focusing more on lizards, but to the greatest, greater populace in mainstream culture, they still would fall under, quote unquote, the furry category. Fair enough. 
Uh, anything? Uh, my next one doesn't come up till M. So anything? Yeah, let's talk about Grand Blue Fantasy uh, okay. versus Rising. Um, first off, this franchise and like the people behind it fucking piss me the fuck off. <laughs> okay. Because I. So for- is this a game you're actually interested yes, in? Yes, I am. I'm okay. very interested in it. Okay. Um, because the fighting game aspect of Grand Blue Fan- Fantasy versus was actually like really fucking good. Um, and so like, they're like, yeah, we're going to do another one. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, I'm, I'm interested in it. My problem is, is that when I hopped into Grand Blue Fantasy, uh, versus I expected there to be a story mode component to it. Cause they're like, yeah, there's a story mode. There's not, it's not about the apparent. And I did deeper research onto it because I was like, there was an anime a while ago that I watched the first couple episodes of, but I felt was like there was missing parts of it. And I found out that it was like a mobile or web browser game. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll play that eventually. And it turns out you can't fucking play that game because it's not available in the U.S. So the game that this entire franchise is based off of, you can't play. It's okay. It's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. I'm fascinated by the lore of this world, these characters. It's like it's fucking up my alley, but I can't fucking play it. I mean, we've already talked that that hasn't stopped you before. <laughs> no, it hasn't, Trevor. With the Fire Emblem stuff, so... Well, that was a bit different. I was able to I was able to play those just because I didn't understand them. Okay. Uh, but there's like apparently like a really good story around these games, and I want to know them. I want to know it. Let All me right. play your story, goddammit. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited for it. It the first one was like a very good, solid fighting, like just fighter overall game. Um sorry, a fighting game overall. Uh it had your basic setups, all the stuff that was pretty interesting. And so I'm curious to see what Rising does. Um, because it's coming from F. I'm going to do this so I'm not absolutely incorrect in talking. Nope, it is Arc System Works. Okay. Arc Systems Works makes the best fucking fighting games, so I have no doubt that this will be a fantastic fucking fighting game. All right. So. Uh, anything else? Uh, like I said, I'm I'm not back until the M, so anything. You're not You're not going to talk about, we're not going to talk about Hollow Knight Silks. So we're not talking about Hollow Knight Silk so. song. I mean. Find I, another podcast. I'm very just, excited for the people who love Hollow Knight. Yeah. I tried it. It's not for me. Yeah. I just, man, that game is not, not. <laughs> not fun. That's that. That is a game that is way more your alley than my alley. So yeah, but I don't. I don't get that far up the ass. <laughs> it's like, hey, what if we did a Metroidvania that was also a Soulsborne game? And it's like, fuck no. Yeah, I'm not a big Metroidvania guy. Metroidvania type guy. That's the thing. Mm, okay. Combat wise in that game, it was fine. Um, but like I didn't think it had a lot of layers because I didn't get too far into the game. Mm-hmm. But also that game. It's like, hey, what if we made level design? Like, what if we, instead of just having a lot of, like, difficult enemy, enemies or combat stuff, we instead had all that, but also the levels were constantly trying to murder you with how fucking difficult they are. Um, I watched Andy Cortez beat it on stream. Um, that game is for masochists, period. All right. Uh, and I love those masochists because many of them are my friends. And I, I, I hope this game comes out this year for them. Um, how about Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name? Is that going to be on your list? I, yeah, it's on my list, but it's just like, I, oh, it's the... It's basically the next Kiryu game. Kiryu game. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm into it. Um, after, I'm, like, after Yakuza 6, after, like, the ending of Yakuza 6, I'm super into it. Mm -hmm. Let's fucking go. Uh, As as somebody who hasn't gotten up to that, that point of Kiryu story, but did see him in Yakuza 7. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know what happened between you in the last, or what happened to you in the last three, four games of your life, but cool. Um, it's fucking heartbreaking. Go play those games. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I mean, his whole, his story in every game is heartbreaking. That's true. <laughs> like, it's just going to be heartbreaking in three, heartbreaking in four, heartbreaking in five, heartbreaking in six. Yeah. Even, even like seeing where he ends up in seven or how he kind of like makes his way into seven, it's like, oh, Okay, something clearly happened in six that was like the end of your story or whatever. Yeah, obviously the fact that the seventh like a dragon game, Yakuza game, gives you a completely new protagonist. It's like okay, yeah, something's happening here. You know, he's not dead though. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's if I get around to checking out the other Yakuza games, maybe that'll be one that I check out here whenever that one hits. Uh, but the next real one on my list is Marvel Spider Man Two. Again. We'll see if it actually comes out here. I don't in think it's going to um, But I mean, I'm not going to put anything past Insomniac. Insomniac have been owning it for the last, I don't know, since Sunset Overdrive, really, for me. <laughs> um, uh, they, and, and especially on the PS5 generation, they have been delivering time and time again. So That's fair. Um, I still haven't played that uh, Ratchet and Clank game yet, so. There's, yeah, there's Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, did you ever play uh, the first Spider-Man and Miles Morales? 
I did not play my. I have Miles Morales. I just got to play it. Yeah. Well, just keep enjoying Elden Ring then. Um, uh, da, 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 uh, Mina the Hollower, I'm excited for. Mina the Hollower? Okay. Yeah, Mina the Hollower. That's come, that's the new one from Yacht Club Games. It's a. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, it's a. Like, if Shovel Knight was Mega Man, this is their, their take on Castlevania. Uh, I'm excited for that uh, because I love, like, I fucking love Shovel Knight. And so, Mina the Hollower seems like. It looks to be like it's shaping up to be pretty damn cool. So I'm excited for that. Cool, cool. Um, I mean, yeah, the next one on my, it's actually, it's another one that's not on here, but I, and I'll, I'll throw it out there as a question to you. Uh, Overwatch 2 story mode. Are we getting that? Is that actually going to come out? I have no fucking idea. Uh, it could, it could not. I don't know. Um, honestly, like what's going with what they're doing now uh, with Overwatch 2, like I'm not even paying attention. Um, like I'm playing the game still. Not as much because I don't have as much free time. And because if I have a free moment, I kind of want to be in Elden Ring right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, it's like, we'll see. Yeah. I hope so. Um, But that's not really, I think, where the prerogative of the team is right now. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, Oxen Free 2 Lost Signals is the next one on my list. I need to play. I've been meaning to play Oxen Free for like five years. It's, I mean, yeah, the, the original Oxen Free broke my like i don't like horror things because it's a really good really well told horror story mixed with like choose your own narrative kind of like uh, telltale-esque in terms of like you're choosing what you're saying to people and stuff like that it's not they will remember this kind of stuff yeah it's um, i i that's the thing i really want to get into that game because of like the opportunities to like shape the story around these characters yeah and i think that the the setup is pretty interesting and also i've been told that the horror style of oxen free is like my fucking jam mm-hmm. um and so i just i have to just sit down play through it and yeah just, you know. and i i i really wanted to love after party from night school studio which was their follow-up uh and it just did not i mean it had a, it was plagued with issues but then also it was just kind of lacking in the final product that they uh ended up coming up with so uh, i hope kind of this return to the game that really like and, and the ideas that really like launch them um i hope uh pays off with oxen free two lost signals um anything in the peas from you i'm trying to look through here sorry i'm like why am i like i don't have my glasses on. like i gotta put those on uh no no um potion craft could be interesting we'll see cool um yeah i mean the the next one for me probably is is down in the s's um so i don't know if you have anything in the in the r's there um uh read only memories neurodriver I play. I mean, I played twenty sixty four read only memories, and that's where my time with read only memories ended. So I don't, I don't really know much more about. I, don't, I know nothing about Neurodriver here. Yeah, I don't know too much about it, but I do know that mid boss, um, they ditched the the dude who was a creeper and a problem, mm-hmm. and so he's gone. And it's uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. First off, I'm happy to be supportive of of mid boss studios again. Um, that was a real rough time. <laughs> Uh, for them, uh, so I, I'm really just hoping that that uh, that team bounces back with this game and really knocks it out of the park. Because mm-hmm. Read Only Memories was one of my favorite games that I've ever played, and it was really really good. And so I'm looking forward to Neuro Driver. Cool. Um, uh, next up for me, it's actually another one that's not on the list, but I, I just because I know that it's out there as a TBD is She Dreams Elsewhere. Mm. Uh, this is a uh, one man kind of game uh, that I first saw at God, PAX West 2019, I want to say, uh, in part of like the kind of funny indie showcase live kind of uh, thing. Um, uh, I played it at PAX East 2020, um, and it's very much like Earthbound slash like early Persona. Um, it's, it's going to be a very cool, um, old school RPG type of game, uh, with, uh, cool little art style aesthetic and stuff like that. And probably just a crazy ass, uh, uh, story to it. So, uh, it's been on my radar for quite a while. Uh, and then Starfield's like the, the other, one of the other big ones here in S land. Oh, uh, sorry. Star street fighter six was also on my list. Oh, back up in yeah i didn't realize June that it had something i thought it was an unreleased one yet but no it, it has a nah, release yeah, date. We have a date on that um yeah. it does have a date on. uh so my bad on that but yeah no i'm I, looking for district i've meant to circle back when you mentioned grand blue i was like oh that's right he's a big fighting game maybe he maybe he doesn't like street fighter no i fuck uh, with street fighter hard 
Yeah. I'm not good at it. I'm absolutely fucking trash at Street Fighter, but I fuck it. Yeah, that one's coming out June 2nd. Yep, that's going to be a great game. I'm excited. It's, I mean, it looks great. I love a lot of new characters that they've showcased and done. Um, shout out to uh, Selena Vega. Uh, Selena Vega. Selena yeah. Vega, who uh, came out as Jury um, during the Royal Rumble. Shout out to that. That was rad as hell. And also. she's going to be a commentator in the game. Yep. Um, it's just like this game is set up to have a lot of opportunity to help the fighting game community kind of like be a like bring back Street Fighter, which was the OG fighting game community game. Bring people back to that, um, get letting people who have been kind of like doing low end tournaments uh, kind of like make their way back and bring in new blood. I think that this will be an awesome opportunity for a lot of great fighting games. Especially since Smash isn't going to be playing nice with Evo anytime soon. God, yeah, <laughs> no, that fucking sucks. Yeah, and and now that PlayStation runs and owns Evo, <laughs> it's basically going to be like, yep, all right, Street Fighter is going to be there. Uh, yeah. Yep, Street Fighter will be there. Um, and But at the same time also, and this is going to be very controversial to say, um, getting Smash out of Evo might be the best for Evo. Um, it's sad to say that because I think the Smash, um, per, like the... Like the most recent Smash, uh, like MK Leo, who is the most recent Smash champion, um, is one of my favorite esports fighters of all time. Uh, he is from Mexico. He is just a really incredible young guy who, um, unfortunately, like has just like between Smash and like Nintendo being shitty, um, between them being shitty and also, uh, uh, the org that he was with, the Fox org. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's not Sonic Fox. Uh, it's, um, it was another one that uh, basically uh, the person who had a like massive chunk majority in the company turned out to be like a like raging fucking racist and awful human being. And so uh, the, the org had to dissolve because he wouldn't sell his shares. Uh, was that Echo Fox? Echo Fox. Thank you. Yeah. Echo Fox was super awesome. They were a really awesome org that was super supportive of their players, but unfortunately, um, one member of their leadership who was just a really bad guy, and just it was a really shitty situation. All right. Um. Uh. Da, 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 da. uh so yeah, Starfield's there. Uh. For me. Um. As you know, a. I put a whole bunch of time into Skyrim revisiting that last year. Uh, and then uh, obviously uh, Fallout is one of my favorite series. So I'm very excited for a that kind of Bethesda game, but in space. Um, I hope it is a good fun time. Uh, and I hope that stuff like Cyberpunk has really like shown, hey, Bethesda, you might not be off the hook for buggy, glitchy shit. Like, actually try and fix what you can about your game. It's not charming anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, fix it. Um, uh, it's also like the first, I think real big Xbox release we've had in quite some time that yeah. like speaks to me. Obviously Halo infinite also didn't really wow a ton of people. So I think they're probably putting a lot of their, uh, their, they're banking a lot of their resources there in, uh, in that. So we'll see. Um, uh, and then we talked about it a little bit uh, already, but Sweet in One and Two is getting an HD remaster, so um, I will potentially be checking that out, picking that up if that comes out. Uh, any other S's there for you? Um, let me go ahead and take a, another quick look at that. I don't believe so. I believe we're good. I, um, given given a conversation you and I had a while ago, I can't imagine System Shock is on your list. No. Um, it's it's what I mean. A this game feels like it's been in development forever, the remake of System Shock. Um, but B, it's a game like I remember playing and being terrified by as a kid. Um, uh, and I'm like, I'm sure I could go back to that version of the game now and be less uh, horrified by it. But the fact that they're like remaking it to make it, uh, you know, just as scary for adult Trevor. I'm like, no, stop coming for me. Um, yeah, no, System Shock's not my bag. Yeah. Um. Uh, in the tease, we have Chia, uh, which is another game that I've seen in a number of like PlayStation showcases, uh, and it just it looks cool. It's, it's one where I think you basically can like assume different things. Uh, you can kind of like become 
different like i want to say like you become a crab or something like that you you can assume different forms uh in this game uh but it's also very like uh pacific islander kind of vibe and aesthetic um and just looks like it's got like a cool kind of uh pixar-esque feel to it so uh interested in seeing what that ultimately turns out to um got a flurry of of tea games here anything in there jumping out at you no i do want to say put a like, I'm curious about what The Wolf Among Us 2 looks like. Yeah, it's on mine, too. Um, it's, I don't know. Like, it's been so long since the first one. The team's certainly not the same. Yeah. Um, Telltale Games, obviously not the same. Yeah, it's just, the way that it, it's so weird. Um, because it's like, it's a completely new studio. I don't, like, the writing team's totally different. Like, are they even going to nail it? Because the first one was so perfectly nailed. It was done so incredibly well. Mm-hmm. And I can't. I don't see what they're going to do about it now um, and kind of like putting this game together because I just don't know what you can. Yeah. Um, uh, I, that's on my list as like a, I'm I'm tentatively interested in that one because, yeah, I love the the first Wolf Among Us game. Um, Thirsty Suitors is another one that's on my list. Um, this is by Outer Loop Games, uh, who most recently did the Falcon Age game. Um uh, and I played the demo of this last year. Uh, it's it's a fun action RPG kind of thing where oh yeah no I this where one's cool. like you're you're out there basically trying it's it's like action RPG slash dating sim kind of uh and skate skateboarding game. Um, so uh, it's gonna just be an interesting wild ride. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I'm interested in that one. Uh, and honestly, I'll just jump to my last one on this list, uh, WrestleQuest. Um, this is uh, the WWE RPG, like pixel art uh, game. Um, I'm just very intrigued by what that one's going to look like. Uh, any any final ones from you there? Um, WrestleQuest is on my list as well. I'm very curious about that. Witchfire is also one that's on my list. Okay. Um, Witchfire, I thought like it could be promising. It depends on like what kind of like the bigger overall world that game looks like. Um, but we'll see. Cool. Um, well, that's, uh, that's the games as listed. Uh, I do have a, a few little, uh, questions that I want to kind of wrap up here with, uh, one, uh, do you think we see anything from Naughty Dog this year? Do we see like our last of us factions, last of us two multiplayer <sighs> game finally come out? I don't know. Um, one, because one part, I don't know where the direction, uh, for that game is going to be coming from. Like I, I can assume like, yeah, okay, this is, was a cut thing. Now we're putting it out as a fully fledged game. Um, what does that look like? I mean, who's to say, um, what does that look like three years removed from the the source game where it was originally going to come out? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that the last of us part two's combat especially was like pretty, like really great, like a massive improvement on the first one. Um, I'm just super curious to see where we go with it, mm-hmm. uh, what it could look like. Um, yeah, I just it's I just don't know enough about what that game could be for me to be like, yeah, that game is definitely going to be coming out this year. Like, like how half baked is that game at this point? Yeah, uh, we have uh, Hellblade Senua's Saga, which was notably not in the list, but theoretically may be coming out this year. You uh, think we see that one this year? You know, I don't know. Uh, once again, it this is the last thing we saw from Senua Saga was a cinematic trailer, which was impressive, and I'm excited to see where Senua's story goes um, after kind of like the weird, not great ending of Senua's sacrifice. Uh, I'm just curious to see where it goes with that, but like we haven't seen any like more thorough stuff on. I just I think if we're not seeing it on any list, there's probably a good indicator that um, it's still heavily in development. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was some news uh, a little while back. Uh, team Asobi, uh, the team behind uh, um, the Astros game, basically was like getting a whole bunch of extra resources while a lot of the other uh, Japan X Dev stuff kind of got uh, disbanded or kind of moved to other, uh, other studios and stuff. You think we get a new Astro game this year? I hope so. Yeah. Astro bot. Um, I've never played the VR one, but I can tell you that the, what I played for the PS five one was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. It was like fun and incredible. And normally I'm not that big of a fan of like collectathon kind of games, but the like, like Astro bot should be the PlayStation mascot. Yeah. He's just the fucking coolest. He's the funniest like all the little Astrobot 
guys are like little dorky minions that I fucking love. Mm -hmm. And I could I could go for more Astrobot for sure. Yeah. Um it might be too soon for a new Astrobot just yet though. Yeah, I mean like we haven't they they haven't theoretically put anything together since the that kind of yeah, pack-in demo for when, the PS5. When was the news that they were putting to get, like they were beefing up that stuff? I mean, they would have been, they would have already been working on stuff mm -hmm. by then. Yeah. Um, uh, and then lastly, uh, what do you think Bluepoint's been working on since Demon's Souls? You think we see whatever their game is this year? I don't think we'll see it this year. I think we'll, well, I think we'll for sure we'll get like it announced this year. Okay. What do you think it is? Any ideas? I mean, the Bluepoint Demon Souls was like the thing to latch onto you for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And now it's out. And now I just like, it's just what else could it be? I have no idea. Like my, my little uh, answer to that question in here, metal gear. I mean, they're, it, they're, they, <laughs> they could play nice with Konami and PlayStation could basically be like, all right, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and bring metal gear to, you know, modern, modern stuff. Konami's not going to do it. So here, give it to blue point. It's possible. Yeah, it's very much possible. We shall see. Um, all right. Well, that's uh, that's what I got. Any other uh, like out there kind of predictions or or like, oh, I wonder if we'll get X kind of thing this year from you? No, I think like as far as like the things that I've been thinking about, um, the things I've been thinking about, like they're out there already. Mm -hmm. so. Do you think we get a Bloodborne <laughs> uh, remake slash remaster? For PS5? I, at this finally. point, I think we got to give up the dream. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's the... I think that's the big hope that people want for Blue Point. But <laughs> maybe I that's just what Blue Point's been working on since uh, since Demon's Souls, yeah. I just I just don't know what that really looks like. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that is going to do it for... Sorry, uh, that was a shitty way of answer that. I don't know where things are at with Blue Point, where if they would go from a Demon Souls straight to a Bloodborne. Um, that's fair. It'd be great if they did. Bloodborne certainly could be running better at 60 frames per second. So, yeah. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this week's episode of that nerdy site show. Thank you, Cam, for joining me to discuss all of our most anticipated games here in 2023, you know, a month and a half late, whatever. Uh, you can follow Cameron at Rev Cabot. Anything you want to give a shout out to there, Cam? Yeah. Massive shout out to my list, my 2022 game of the year list. Go check that out. I work relatively, like I put relative effort into my photoshops. Go check those out. Um, there you go. The creative process was probably the thing that I spent the most hardest part on. Um, the actual work of like photoshopping things around was not as hard. Uh, but sometimes you, you like you look at it, you're like, ah, I don't know about this. This isn't a good look. It doesn't look good. It's weird. So you trash it and then you put something else in there instead, and it's just and, much better. And that's what that's what made it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. The one that you're thinking of that like really annoyed you. That one would no, no, did, not, no. did not have no, a I, more thorough ship on, like I'm, a thorough push on it. No, I'm thinking of that of all of your photoshops. Oh, then yeah, that, the, yeah. that these are the ones that made the cut. How bad were the other ones? Yeah, I have never once claimed to have an artistic bone in my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you can follow me at Trevor J Starkey. Uh, in addition to yeah, go go support Cam's write up. Uh, go check that out. Uh, I will also shout out as a as I kind of touched on earlier. Obviously, we're doing Elden Ring. Uh, that series is coming back this week. Uh, we recorded our uh, our our newest episode of Elden Ring uh, that'll go live on Tuesday, uh, and then Thursday we'll start the Trevor replays Breath of the Wild uh, series that we'll be doing for potentially the foreseeable future. So I think. Uh, uh, unless like something else comes in the works, I think we'll probably do like Elden Ring Tuesdays, Breath of the Wild Thursdays for a little while here. And then if we do kind of slot something else in there, we'll do bonus episodes like the Sea of Stars demo that is uh, presumably available now on YouTube.com slash that nerdy site. So go check out all of our fun Let's Plays over there. Uh, you can follow all of us over at that nerdy site or go to that nerdy site.com for all the latest from us like Cameron's write up. Uh, if you like what you heard, once again, please remember to like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, all that other fun stuff we always ask for in these calls to action. Uh, thank you for listening. As always, stay nerdy and be good to each other.